So we're going to show you how to quickly get up and running with Variable Diffusion. And once you've got the plugin and presets installed and you started up After Effects, you'll need to properly set your project settings, which are basically to have it set to 16-bit and with linear eyes working space enabled. So you want to click here and change 8-bit to 16-bit. And before you can enable linearized working space, you first have to choose a working space. So for 99% of all projects, the appropriate choice is Rec. 709. So we have a comp here uh, with a sequence of shots. Let's start off by applying one of these stylized looks presets. Let's throw, this is a uh, Cherry Radiant 7. So there's two controls that you're probably going to be using the most with Variable Diffusion, especially if you're using presets. The first is Blend with Original. Now, the presets are pretty potent, kind of straight out of the box. And so the first thing you usually want to do is adjust the Blend with Original. As a general rule of thumb, I'd say 15 to 20 is what you want to use uh, at its strongest. And depending on your project, you'll probably often find yourself setting it to something like 60 or even 70. So here it is at 70 and without. So as you can see, even at a setting as high as 70, it still is a noticeable effect on the image. For now, let's just set this back to 15. So mid-tone brightness, here I'll first I'll just show you what that does. Here it is low, here it is high. You set it back. When using real glass diffusion filters, if there's very large bright areas in a frame, that often causes diffusion to spread out over much of the image, which will perceptually brighten the image overall. And cinematographers will often close down the T-stop or F-stop to bring the exposure down a little to match with the rest of the scene. The mid-tone brightness control can help in the same way. Though for this shot, it doesn't really matter because these bright areas really aren't that large. If you look at the presets again, these numbers after the names are the grades of the particular look and the higher the number usually the larger the halation. Here's Ott's Electro Earthy 1. Take a snapshot of that and Ott's Electro Earthy 3. You can see the kind of magenta halation from the bright areas is much smaller in 1 versus 3. Now let's look at the Skin Enhancers presets. Let's go into the presets and let's put uh, Deager isolated on here. You can see the difference it's making there. Now, one of the most important things about using skin enhancers is the target skin tones controls here. And you can see here there's an on toggle. Usually the default settings are pretty good as far as targeting skin tones. But if you change the viewing mode to skin tone finder, you can see here by changing fine skin brightness will affect the selection area. Let's change this to be a little broader than what it was, even though it'll include some of the hair. And there's fine skin hue, which again can help refine the selection. Another thing to mention for this quick start guide is the presets peaker tool that comes bundled with variable diffusion. You'll see that it contains text instructions in it. It's pretty easy to use. It will actually help you find the right preset to start off with very, very quickly because we designed it from the ground up to be as useful and quick as possible. Thanks for watching the quick start guide and for notifications of new tutorials, free presets, and special discount codes, feel free to sign up for our mail list at invch.com join and you can also add us on Twitter or Instagram.